Hello beautiful souls and welcome to Karuna Yoga. My name is Veronica and in today's video I have five stretches for you that will help you open your hips. Now I highly advise that before you do any of these stretches do a little bit of a warm-up so your body is nice warm and is ready to crack on with some further movements. I have created a quick warm-up video for you earlier so if you wish to warm up with yoga then you can do so using your sun salutations and your breath before but if you just want to do your own warm-up whatever it may be raising the heart rate breaking some sweat and creating that internal heat is an excellent thing to do before you crack on with lengthening the muscles and before you do any stretches or maybe you can just use these stretches at the end of your working out whichever whatever kind of workout you did today just using these to work with your um, hip openers all right so without further ado <laughs> jump on your mat and let's get this video started Okay, so our first pose will be swan pose, bringing the heels together, the knees apart, so we create the room for our upper body to enter into. We can just start working our hands to extend towards the front of the mat, but make sure that you're keeping your sit bones on your heels. So if they start to move away, then just make sure that you're coming back, and that you're working from the tummy. So it should be the tummy that comes first as opposed to our head. It's the tummy that wants to lay flat on the floor and just enter between the thighs. And if you can do it, then allow the head to follow. So our sensation is that we are pushing the sit bones back on the heels and you should feel that the hip opener this way is happening deeper. You should feel your inner thighs and your groin area shooting up like the fire. The muscles are warming up, firing up. And just staying here for 30 to, 30 to 60 seconds. Your shoulders should be pulled away from the ears. Most times I'm using swan pose as a resting pose, but today you really want to uh, squeeze that belly towards the floor and um, push your sit bones on the heels. So you should be feeling that you're warming up in the groin area and you're creating muscle activity there. So it's not just a passive stretch, but becoming an active stretch. Okay, with the next inhalation, lift up and come back into your seated position. All right, the next stretch I like to work with is Janu Shishasana A. So extending the left leg ahead of you, pulling the toes back and then rolling the top of the right leg on the floor we really want to avoid any rotation in the knees. So if you find yourself that you are not opening the hips yet and that you have a bit of a pain here, first of all, lift the leg up a little bit. You can cushion it up and find some support there. But what I like to do, which I don't have on me right now, but uh, holding on to um, some material, which usually is my fluffy socks in the morning when I'm practicing yoga and my body is too tight. Um, but have a bit of a material, preferably soft, put it behind the knee and then squeeze it. Now squeezing the thighs and the calves together will help you keep that knee in the right alignment and then bring in the sole of the right foot on the inside of the left leg. We will inhale, lift up, and when we exhale, we will fold forward um, just along that extended leg. Now, it doesn't matter at this stage how far you can fold. 
and you don't need to, him to bring the top of the head on the leg. I just want you to think about this leg because this is the hip opening part that's happening here. So squeezing those muscles together, pulling that right leg back and keeping the knee facing down, that will help you open up that right side of the hip. And by facing forward and folding forward, just how we do in our seated forward fold in Paschimottanasana, you need to keep the torso facing that way and that will create the lengthening in this area. You can hold on to that extended leg or maybe you're up here, it doesn't matter where you are, work with this section here. So probably that was already a long enough stretch on that side. Inhale, come out of the stretch and we will just change sides. Ooh, I already feel it. Okay, so going on the left side, find your alignment, squeeze those muscles together and engage that extended leg as well. Just because we are working in the hip flexor, we still want to engage all the muscles in the right leg. So inhale, lift and lengthen the spine and when you exhale, Crap onto that foot or onto the shin or crap onto the thigh if that's where you are and just start pulling that left knee back, rolling the pelvis under and then extending your upper body as the extension of that pelvic movement. Pelvic movement, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean. So instead of curling under like so and just reaching for the toes, you want to engage this movement and have your pelvis, the, the movement, uh, the tilting of the pelvis create that movement. So your upper body moves like one unit. And while you're chilling here, I'm just going to share my thoughts um, because I, I watched something the other day. I think maybe I saw somebody on Instagram posting that um, many yoga teachers say that it's um, don't round the back, don't round the back and you should be rounding the back. And is it good or is it not good? Um, I think it really depends on what you're working on. So obviously when you're working on lengthening, then it's good to keep the back straight because that will pull onto the muscles more. Um, whereas when you're working more like with your um, fascia sheets in your body, uh, then I know that rounding, for example, is great. And there is nothing wrong with rounding the back uh, in general. It just depends on what you're working on. Whew, I think we have worked enough on Janushishasana. <laughs> and <laughs> that's it. You can just release the legs. Now, uh, for our next stretch, we have a wide-legged forward fold, but I wanted to show you a variation of that to begin with. So you can use a wall space at home. If you have a nice, spacious home, <laughs> this is not my home, but it's nice and spacious, and just bringing the legs up on the ceiling and then bringing your seat bone to be directly behind the wall, you can just start opening up the legs and allowing gravity here to help you in this passive stretch to stretch the inner thighs and just open up the hips even more. So this can be your preparatory pose for the next one that we are doing. And I love this because the, wall, uh, the floor really supports your back and gravity helps you just release. So it's important very often when we are afraid of uh, opening up our bodies, we tense up the muscle, but by just letting go and telling your muscles to relax and just fall out, the feet and the legs to fall out to each side, um, will just help you passively stretch these muscles. And I think it's a, it's a nicer way to then work into our wide-legged forward fold. So stay here for as long as you wish. This can be your preparation and when you want to come out, 
just bring your knees together, roll out to one side, and we will go with our wide-legged forward fold. So, starting in the same position, um, the toes are engaged. As always, we want to keep them engaged. I will move back a little bit because I'm gonna fold forward. So, make sure that the toes and the knees are in one alignment with each other. And then we'll take a deep inhalation, lengthen the spine towards the ceiling, suck the lower belly in, and when we exhale, utilizing the same movement, so again, moving from the pelvis, and that will keep our back straight. Now, yes, we want to work with a straight back here, because this would be cheating ourselves into the pose and it's not really working as deep with our groin area and with the inner thighs as much as this one would. So keeping the back straight, we will start extending the, uh, the spine and then lowering the belly. You can use your forearms if you made all the way here to just push you a little bit deeper into it and once you find that movement, that space, um, and you can start bringing yourself from the top of the pelvis, then lay, laying down your uh, lower belly first. I mean, I cannot come all the way down, <laughs> not right now. And then your belly, and then your forehead. And I feel that my back is rounding a little bit here. I'm not fully uh, this, uh, this pose is not fully accessible to me just yet, but there is nothing wrong with that. You're working on lengthening and then going forward. Lengthening and then going forward. Wherever you are, it's lengthening and then going forward. And you really should feel this in your inner thighs now. This is a much more advanced stretch. But again, the way we get into a much more advanced stretch is by starting from here. So don't compare your journey to mine. I'm going this deep simply because today my body allows me to do so. But the essence of the stretch is there in the previous version as well. And we are just looking to take the benefits away. It's not how we look, it's how we feel. And I feel that I have stretched enough in that pose. <laughs> that should be enough for you as well. And then just closing up the knees very carefully because the muscles are quite uh, stretched out there. You can just rock out the hips from side to side. And we will start working with our Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose. So bringing the soles of the feet together we will start here. Now, again, if your knees are up here and if you're bending in the uh, lower back, there's nothing wrong with that. That's where you start. You can start using some cushions at the beginning and just working on extending the spine. Now, I'm saying that again because that will allow you a deeper um, hip opener. And then gently, as our hips are opening, our knees are going to go closer to the floor. But if you, re if you just cut me in half here, and you see on one side, this is exactly the same alignment as it would be in our Janu Shishasana A in the previous pose. So squeezing the calves and the thighs together is essential here to then allow that rotation in the thigh, not in the knee. The, sorry, the rotation is in the hip, not in the knee, and it's the rotation of the thigh bone. And only if you have the room here, then start opening up the soles of the feet towards the ceiling and bringing your knees even further down towards the mat. Using the core strength here to keep yourself up, we can hold onto the feet. If you feel that you have enough stretch here, just work with that. Or maybe you feel that, you know what, Veronica, this does nothing for me. And I'll be like, well, I have an answer to that. <laughs> well, I don't, but the yoga people do. So our, your next movement will be, 
inhale lifting and lengthening in the spine engaging the core and then the same movement as we did before tilting that pavis down curling the tailbone up towards the ceiling that will take your upper body forward and down and again i cannot do this without rounding my back yet but essentially you will find that stage where your elbows start to reach for your thighs and then you can press those elbows into the thighs to keep the knees down and just work here with lengthening the spine and then pulling yourself forward lengthening and then pulling forward and essentially your tummy will be on the top of the feet which sometimes happens to me sometimes doesn't today it doesn't and in each case I'm still rounding my spine because I'm working on my hip openers so again it doesn't matter where you are it's a journey all right Whew. I think that was enough with Baddha Konasana as well and you should definitely feel this in your hips now let's just add some gentle rotations in the femur bone and in the hips by taking the knees from side to side and we will go with our last pose I mean my hips will be so open for tomorrow <laughs> no actually it, it happens a different way you work on your hip openers and the next day you're like oh my god I'm so tight <laughs> but that's because again you're lengthening your muscles you're building them lengthways so throughout days and weeks it will happen all right our last pose will be frog pose so we will start in our tabletop position I think this is the easiest and we will take the knees out little by little and then start sliding them out our feet are engaged if you cannot see it's because of that so pulling the toes back the, um, the toes are flexed and once you have found that place where you feel the stretch just allow your body weight to assist you here the reason why I put this as a last stretch is because um, I like to have the control in the stretch at the beginning um, so when it comes to like placing weight onto the stretch as opposed to just using gravity I mean I'm using gravity here but my body weight is in the stretch right now <laughs> that kind of scares me and I don't want to by accident overdo it so I like to work with my own strength first if I can use my strength to deepen in the stretch and then using these uh, heavier passive stretches <laughs> and when I say heavier it's because your heaviest part is around your buttocks um, so placing that weight into this stretch is quite intense you can start rocking back and forth if you wish but again just staying here for around a minute a minute and a half and just relaxing into it over time it will help you really open those hips up I think that was enough now come on to your hands and then shift your weight up closing up the knees and just come into your Vajrasana first and if you wish you can just do a forward fold here into your Balasana child's pose just closing everything up and allowing the muscles to return <laughs> To their chilled out state as opposed to their freaked out state <laughs> and whenever you had enough rest just raising back into your seated position just to say goodbye I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you found these stretches useful um, if you did then don't forget to like share and subscribe also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and as you know these videos are free and will always be free but if you wish to support me then go over to my patreon page and you can show me some love there too 
Anyway, don't forget to breathe, balance and blossom today and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Om Shanti Namaste. Mm -hmm.